Hello everyone. So I was just making this beautiful video about Mars and Je Jupiter coming together in Gemini. I was even thinking, ah, oh, this is like the most clear I felt in a while. And then I noticed it wasn't recording. It's one of those experiences. And so I'm just gonna give the teaching that I can give right now with the energy that I have um, to allow this energy to move. And I will come back to give the fuller teaching in, an, in when the cycle comes back. Uh, and, and to me, this is actually a really important Mars teaching that I'm wanting to bring forward. Energy is something that ebbs and flows in different moments. With Mars in Gemini in particular, there's a sort of um, strong pulse of intellectual energy that wants to be used. But that moment comes when that moment comes. And when that moment isn't there, you can't force it. One of the things that often happens with Mars is we're hyper excited, we're hyper um, young, right? Um, active, engaged, alert, right? But this is one of those experiences where in our current society, being always engaged and ready and capable to perform, it's valued to such an extent that we might be drugging ourselves or caffeinating ourselves, um, doing all kinds of things to kind of keep our energy up. And so we may not be aware of the timing and the cycles and the flow of when to start again, when to keep on going and when to retreat, right? To use the metaphor of going to war, when to retreat from the fight. Uh, you know, you're, you're losing too many troops, withdraw, 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 recoup, start again, make a new plan when the energy is refreshed, when you can create a new strategy. This is a struggle with Mars. I think with Mars and Gemini, it can be a struggle for when to know when to stop because there is a lot of mental energy. We can think of this in terms of our plans, um, the things that we're learning about, the things that we're saying. It can actually feel like a lot of clutter just in terms of how much data and information or activity or social engagement there is. What starts off as very exciting and engaging can easily become a point of depletion if we're just in constant go mode. And I would just say, as we're approaching this Mars-Jupiter conjunction, this is a thing to look out for. Jupiter is expansion. It does invite uh, an expanded experience and perception of our reality. And there are opportunities to embrace, right? Things to say yes to, um, promotions to go for. Often that will mean this is the time to act with Mars, Jupiter coming together. It's like act now to follow your intuitive guidance. And this can be very expansive and very beneficial, right? Now is the moment to buy the ticket. Uh, now is the time to email this person. This is the project, you're feeling the inspiration, go and do it. But we need to be mindful that that doesn't become an over excessiveness. It can easily become this issue of going too far. It's like trying to take on too much, having a good sounding idea, but not knowing when to stop and kind of overloading your system. The mental social overload can stress the nervous system. And the issue with Mars Jupiter is it actually can highlight the opposite of all of this expansion and growth and opportunities and this like power and the self leadership and this courage to act upon them can actually highlight and emphasize an immense amount of confusion. It's like you're looking at the map and then all of a sudden you don't really know how to read it anymore. You thought you knew you were going, but you, was, you didn't stop to reconsider. You know, so Mars corresponds to our instincts and Jupiter corresponds to our intuition. Interestingly, I think a lot of beginners astrology students will oftentimes associate instincts and intuition as the same, but they're very different. Instinct is a sort of raw, immediate response from within to experience, and it calls for action. The instinctual impulses don't say what we should do, but they're just on their own. They're an instinctual impulse. You might feel an instinctual impulse, you know, to fight, to push or to run away, or to get something, to say yes, to say no. What we learn with Mars as we evolve relative to our own growing soulful self-awareness is we reference all instinctual impulses relative to who do I want to become? Who is the person that I want to grow into? And so we might have that fight impulse, but then we can say, okay, is that necessarily what I need to do right now? So we learn how to transmute this energy by translating those instinctual impulses into clear, thoughtful, conscious choice making. That's what happens with Mars. And that can be very hard to do when we've already decided that we want to go a certain direction. 
and this is humbling for me, I made this video and I probably spent 30 minutes after having already, well, I didn't really make the video, I'm just talking to the camera, but it wasn't recording, trying to recreate. I, I got up, I'm like, I'm gonna do this. Hey, Mars, I am gonna do this. I did a bunch of pull-ups, drink some water. I told myself, I'm gonna do this, focus. I'm choosing with my will to make this work and it wouldn't work because I was, and this is a beautiful insight that I'm now grasping, I'll be grateful for it. I was trying to recreate the same experience. So I was literally trying to walk the same path that I walked before. And what quickly happened for me is I was speaking the words that at first felt fresh and intuitive and exciting and real and authentic, but it was like all pre-rehearsed. And I, I just, I would feel drained and depleted the more I was talking. And this is the issue. We can go so, so far and just go, go, go. But the further we do, the further we'll become from where we're actually trying to get. So let's speak about Jupiter. Jupiter is intuition, which is very different than instincts. Jupiter is our way of knowing without knowing how we know. There's no empirical or logical basis for it. So the intuition is telling us, it's telling us what we need to know. It's giving us guidance, but it may not fit into our logical framework. It will eventually, especially in Gemini, everything makes sense. But a teaching with Jupiter in Gemini is we can't always reference the logical frameworks that we've already established and mapped out in our mind because that will limit the expansive learning and new perspective that we are yet to come into. So we follow our intuition and it opens up experiences, uh, new data, new perspectives, new engagements, new social interactions that radically can alter and emphasize new ways of understanding our life. It expands our very framework of living here. But there needs to be openness in the mind. That's it, you know? So as I'm speaking, I'm realizing, you know, this whole time that I was trying to push through this video based upon how I did it before, there are two Jupiter and Gemini teachings that I can really access. One is the inauthenticity of repeating the ideas that I've already come across, right? Things that make sense. And that's a Jupiter trap. Trying to recreate a previous experience for the life of me, I don't know how to teach something that I already just taught. The, the topic, yes, but I, I actually have to almost forget about everything I know about how to teach it and start anew. One way or another, it has to be I'm starting again from a completely new place. And so that Jupiter inauthenticity will become a point of further and further alienation. One might feel alienated, or we might actually alienate others because when we're not being authentic, our own essence isn't really coming through. Like The teachings aren't necessarily what we might want them to actually be. And the other issue is we'll have a belief system. This totally made sense to me about an hour ago. These ideas were really insightful and brilliant. Of course I want to teach it. So the, intuit the intuition that I had while trying to make this video, I'm realizing now, was to stop. But I didn't want to because it sounded so good, Jupiter and Gemini, and Mars and Gemini, I didn't want to not go. Right. What's the issue with Mars? It doesn't want to stop. Stopping can be equated with defeat. Like on an existential level, if you don't stop, you might be defeated. You might lose. You might get eaten. So when we already start going or, you know, the other person's going to win over you or whatever it might be. So whenever we get in a, into a certain momentum, it's actually hard to break that momentum unless there's some sort of greater agency and self-leadership and wisdom that will tell us stop, pause, and recalibrate. You're not going to win this fight. You're not going to win this battle. So that's what happened for me. Mars, Jupiter, emphasizing that. But I'm excited that I get to share this little offering, this little teaching here. It's healing for me. And I feel this authentically expresses a quality of Mars, Jupiter. So let me offer a couple more points on this. So recognizing Mars and Jupiter relates to instincts and intuition. You put them together, you have intuitive instincts. Like this is the present moment, immediate sense of there's something that I need to do right now. Like this is the opportunity. This is the calling and it's real. And when we're intuitive and we're really authentically in touch with it, it's going to be spontaneous. And that's different than, you know, 
telling ourselves, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, this is what I'm supposed to do. Maybe we're sensing the larger picture, but we're too quick to decide and map out all of its parameters. So I think right now with this Mars-Jupiter, especially over the next two weeks while it's approaching, we're sensing something. There is a call to action. There are a lot of new opportunities and experiences and maybe new things will be emerging for us, calling us to respond. We never need to act in hasty ways or stress ourselves out to get to where our soul is destined to become. This is about cultivating and strengthening our own intuitive self-leadership. That's another way of thinking about Mars and Jupiter coming together. Right From a Jupiter point of view, we're learning how to be more of a, um, or from, from Mars point of view, we're learning how to be more decisive and clear in engaging and acting upon our intuitive instincts in the moment. From a Jupiter point of view, we're learning how to feel and sense into the flow of the Tao for exactly when the moment to act is, and we're thoughtful enough to question our beliefs, to question our thoughts, and not just do what we think we're supposed to do or what we've previously decided. So let's take a look at the flow of this transit. Um, right now, we're about nine degrees from the exact conjunction. What's interesting is for a while, I was really wanting to do a Mars in Gemini through the houses. Um, and I couldn't really do that because in the house system that I work in, um, here I have it at zero degrees, but you know, you can have the signs anywhere in the chart. So Gemini can be occupying more than one house. And with all the different aspects happening in Gemini, I didn't feel an integrity in speaking generically to Mars and Gemini through the houses. So I'm actually gonna do a Mars-Jupiter through the houses. And I think that's a really good idea because you'll see here, as they approach, they come together at 16 degrees. This is actually in the very middle of Gemini. Um, they're both squaring Saturn. And then immediately Mars moves to square Neptune. So this is kind of like the essence. And you know, Mars-Jupiter, it's like blowing everything up, expanding, highlighting all these greater Gemini themes. So stay tuned to an upcoming video on this Mars-Jupiter conjunction. I'll just close with that affirmation that it's really great with Gemini in general to feel like I know what I need to know and Jupiter, I'm not missing out on any opportunities. And Mars, there's no need to rush. As we're approaching this conjunction, there's a lot of feeling into, there's a lot of getting really honest with ourselves. It's a both slowing down and a speeding up at the same time. Slowing down our um, sense of immediacy and our reactivity and the fervor of our mind and getting more and more in touch with what's really exciting, what's calling us. And I think we can all get better and really hold as an intention and a, a prayerful orientation to feel more and more into the energy of authenticity. We can even apply that in our conversations uh, and the plans that we're making. Like, are you sure that's the direction? Take a moment, there might be more information or you might be very quick to just kind of conclude everything because who wants to be inconcluded? Right? Who wants to be inconclusive? I wanna make the plans, you know, I'm putting a lot of programs together right now. And I keep on finding over and over and over again, similar to the lesson that I learned today, that if I just take some time and just feel into it more, there's another piece of information that's emerging right now. And when, when I see it clearly, it's like seeing the forest from the trees, which is a very good Jupiter Gemini example. We can feel the larger picture and act with a lot more clarity, a lot more cleanness, a lot more decisiveness, a greater sense of clarity of purpose. Okay, let me share a few announcements with you all. Um, in October, we have the second annual Evolutionary Astrology Conference. This is an opportunity to study, um, to learn from many of the teachers of evolutionary astrology as taught by Jeffrey Wolf Green. If you want to enroll, this is a great time to do it. Enrollment is $100 off with the early bird coupon, early bird, until the very end of this month, July 31st. So learn more about that in the description below. I have many classes, class series, and my self-study training program also available on my website. Students that take my self-study program can enroll in my live course when I begin a new cohort every year. Lastly, I often write articles in tandem to these videos. 
these articles are a way that I sort of assimilate and practice and integrate um, these teachings more into my own bones. It's something I thoroughly enjoy. I learn a lot from articulating this in written form. It's like an art for me. Uh, if you want to receive that in your inbox, I send them out maybe two or three times a month. I will send recent videos and any other work updates as well in these emails. Okay, everyone, as always, thank you so much for joining me and for watching.